Oh, wonderful. Michael Matt, an authentic knight of the Catholic faith. Isn't that something? <laughs> your, your talk was fabulous. Good. Thank you so much. We will see them in peace. Bro. I think so. Good. Yeah. <laughs> That was not staged, ladies and gentlemen. I'm really excited about this. I just got a book. This is this is it. This is the reveal. Could it have been revealed in a better way? This is why we extended our stay through Monday night. It was because of Bishop Schneider's new book, which uh, my friend Diane Montagna, uh, is, she, she interviewed him over the course of the last year. This is the result, and you just saw him hand me the book. So that's a pretty impressive reveal, I must say. This is the first time the book has been available. And the author of the book, Bishop Schneider, uh, just gave it to the remnant uh, viewing audience. We're very proud of that. Anyway. I told you something good was going to happen Monday night. We extended our stay in order to be here for the launching of this book, and I'll tell you why in a second. But first of all, I wanted to just say something sort of retrospectively um, with respect to our, our stay here, our, our coverage over the past couple of weeks. We're going to be leaving this week. There was a lot of bad news. I mean, we, we, we tried to find things that were positive. There really wasn't a whole lot of, a lot of positive. This is the Vatican Press office right across the street, right down the street. This is, this is the Via della Conciliazione. It's all happening right here. And every day we'd come down here, we'd listen to these people, and then we would try to give it back to you, the unvarnished truth of what's going on at the Senate. And here's the thing. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty depressing stuff. But again, what we find, what I find really encouraging, I know some of you are saying, you look tired, you look like you're going to give up, or you're going to leave the church, it's just all so bad, it's the end of the world. No, I, I don't feel that way at all. I miss my kids, but you know, as far as what, what, what I've seen here, um, it's only encouraging because I don't think they can pull this off. I honestly don't, you know? So what, what we had anticipated might be a problem is if they bring in sort of like, you know, Felsenberg, Luciferian genius personalities that would really be seductive and they would pull the wool over the eyes of everyone, maybe even us, you know, fool the elect or whatever. And we're seeing just the exact opposite of that. And I really want to bring this to you as sort of my final message uh, from Rome. As far as my reaction to this whole thing, I don't think they can pull it off. They're going to pull off the Amazon Synod. It's going to go that way. But the awakening that we're seeing happening is so powerful. So we're not at all ready to leave the church. We don't even for a second think this is the end. Christ is going to win, not only in the future, at the end of the world, but now he's going to win. They can't pull this thing off. And tonight, which again is the reason why we extended our stay, um, gave us <laughs> even more renewed hope. I'm flying high right now. There's a taxi over there blowing its horn. Um, who did we have? In this room tonight for the launching of this book, written by the most traditional Catholic bishop in the world, uh, interviewed by one of the most traditional Catholic Vaticanistas in this whole city, Diane Montagna. And who do you think was sitting there listening to the launch, the kickoff of this book? Cardinal Mueller, Raymond Cardinal Leo Burke, uh, uh, Cardinal of Rins, many, many priests. Professor De Matei gave a talk in here tonight. There were journalists like Ed Penton and Robert Royal and uh, Father Gerald Murray from the, from the Papal Posse. He emceed the event. So imagine the people that were in that room. And then there were a lot of just important uh, journalists like Sa Sandra Magister was here. A lot of people were listening and watching to this, watching this event, which was the launch now of a very important traditional Catholic book. This book covers everything from the traditional mass to the uh, Second Vatican Council to the, the pontificate of Pope Francis to Bishop Schneider's opinion on the Society of St. Pius to everything is in here and so to have these people be here for the launch is what it was what I'm talking about people are waking up and you, you really could feel it tonight um, um, Cardinal Burke gave a beautiful talk on the, on the need for the bishops the role of the bishops to speak out against error when they see it and to bring the, the people the faithful to Jesus Christ and that he was saying that people are starving for the old catechetical teachings of the church just to bring people to Christ, to bring them into the Catholic Church, to lovingly show them how to save their souls. That's what they want from the bishops, he said. <laughs> Professor De Matei, I, I can't even believe that I watched this man, this incredible first-rate historian, that he delivered words to people like Cardinal Mueller and Cardinal, and Cardinal Burke. We are not schismatics, for schism repels us. We are not heretic, heresy repels us. And he goes on to say that when Francis goes off, when the Pope goes off track on things that are Catholic, that we need to stand and resist. And we're going to publish this talk, so don't worry, I can't uh, read it all here, it's too long. We're going to publish it on the Remnant website probably within the next 24 hours. I just wanted to share this moment with you because people who say things aren't happening and these men are not speaking as, as they should and they need to speak out more and they're wimpy and they're not... 
you're missing the point. You're missing the point. And what we saw tonight, where all these men were willing to come in, it was sort of like a high-level ecclesiastical Catholic identity conference going on in here. They're willing to come over and talk about this and listen and help to launch a book like this. This is what we're talking about. Working together, they're forming a network among themselves. And they're, and they're working, they're doing something. And they too, just before I walked into this hotel, Bishop Schneider said, we are going to win because Christ is winning already. Christ will win. Christ has won. And his face was was lit up and with joy and happiness, even though he's, he knows as, as well or better than any of us what happened in the Synod this week. He knows how terrible it is. It doesn't shake his faith, and it shouldn't shake any of our faith. You know, we, sh we stay strong and we have confidence that the good men are going to receive the grace that they need to fight this war. So I want to, I want to leave you with the talk that Bishop Snyder just gave, and I hope it gives you the same kind of enthusiasm and inspiration that he gave me. It probably won't because you had to see it from the context of that room where you had real movers and shakers, cardinals of the Catholic Church that were sitting there and listening to Bishop Snyder deliver this powerful message of resistance and fidelity to the Catholic tradi tradition and to the Catholic faith in the middle of the crazy town stuff that's been going on here with the Amazon uh, Synod. So again, thanks very much for your patience. I hope the Monday uh, reveal of positivity that I promised you lived up to it. It certainly did for me. I'm flying high. I'm so excited. I am not discouraged ready to fight we're going to go back home and that was the other thing at the end of this conference not only do we pray the our father and the hail mary in uh in latin but bishop schneider bless his heart god save him and god protect him he had the entire company sing the christus vincit you know together i'm telling you it's one of the greatest moments that i've that i've experienced here in rome since our stay here two and a half weeks ago full of hope full of inspiration full of confidence we're going to persevere we're going to win long live christ the king order this book on michael matt in rome and we'll see you soon when reading Bishop Schneider's book, I was struck. The Soviet Union tried to suppress religion, and then secularistic West Germany tried to do the same in a soft way. And the result in this room is a bishop who not only defends the faith intelligently, but does so in a way that inspires others to say, we must re-examine how we live our lives and not assume that the current situation is inevitable. So with that, the Auxiliary Bishop of St. Mary in Astana, Kazakhstan, will now present to us his book. Laudetur Jesus Christus. <laughs> Eminences, Reverend Priests, Religious Sisters, Dear friends, ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> from different sides I was asked several times to consent to the publishing of a book-length interview. In doing so, my first thought was directed to the brave lay faithful, to the fathers and mothers of family, to young men and young women who are living in the midst of the darkness of our unbelieving, hubristic, and decidedly anti-Christian age. Unbelief and human hubris towards God and His supernatural revelation penetrated already widely into the life of the Church in our time. The brave lay faithful, the little ones in the church feel abandoned since the vast majority of the shepherds seek their refuge in silence, while other shepherds, for different motives, pass over to the enemies, becoming thereby wolves in sheep's clothes. While speaking in my book as clear as possible, I wanted to share something of my experience of the Catholic faith and life primarily with those who constitute truly the existential periphery within the church of our time. That is to say, the little ones who are confused, scandalized, marginalized by worldly-minded churchmen 
who unscrupulously sell in the temple of God divide doves who are the simple faithful. One can recall in this regard the following commentary of origin from the beginning of the third century quote, the bishops and presbyters have been entrusted the first seats by the people and nevertheless they deliver the church over to those whom they should not and install those who should not be leaders. They are the ones selling doves who seize Jesus of a child. So, quotation of origin. To the current situation within the church, one can fully apply the following lucid words of Pope Pius X. I quote, The relentless enemy of mankind never sleeps. According to the events of the times and the occurrence of events, he tactically changes language, but always ready for the fight. Indeed, the more the error pursued by the truth is condemned to hide, the more one must fear for the dangerous ambushes behind which it will not be long that he will reestablish his always deadly artilleries. Therefore, we can never abandon ourselves to a false security without incurring those anathemas launched against the false prophets who announced the peace where peace was not who sang the victory when everything called us to fight. And for this it is necessary in all times, and it is especially in these, in which the great conspiracy hatched directly against our Lord Jesus Christ, against his supernatural and revealed religion, against the people, whose false teachers say evil is good and good is evil, calling darkness light and light darkness, seducing many minds that bend to every wind of doctrine. For this we believe the time to speak has come. So Pope Pius X. In modern times, we possess an admirable example of the fidelity to the baptismal vows of blessed Karl of Austria, the last emperor of Austria. In the extremely difficult times of the First World War and occupying the highest political and social position, he denied nevertheless any compromise which would undermine the validity of the commandments of God in the public life and which would dethrone Jesus Christ from his influence in the social life. Blessed Karl categorically refused any collaboration with sin and with the godless powers. During his Swiss exile, more than once high-level exponents of Freemasonry had offered Emperor Karl to work for the recovery of the throne <coughs> but under the condition of a freer marriage legislation and a freer school education and under the condition of the admission of Freemasonry in Austria. The response of the Blessed Karl <coughs> to such offers were truly exemplary. He answered, What I have received from God I cannot accept from the hand of the devil. What a glaring contrast we see between such a heroic testimony of the fidelity to his baptismal vows on the part of a lay faithful, in this case of Blessed Emperor Karl, to those churchmen who in our days actively collaborate 
with the promotion of sin and with anti-Christian and Freemasonic powers. Such churchmen betray not only their baptismal vows, but even more the vows of their episcopal ordination. Indeed, many influential churchmen in our days engage in promoting the equality of all religions and the substitution of active evangelization with the so-called interreligious dialogue. In this way, they not only betray Christ, but commit a great sin against the love for their neighbor. Those, however, who are bringing to the people of our dark age the light of Christ's truth and the sweetness of his kingdom are, in fact, the greatest benefactors of humankind. In that sense, we may understand and recall also the following prophetical words of Pope Pius XII, which, which I, I would conclude. I quote, he wrote this exactly uh, 80 years ago, 39. And you will see it's very up to date. Precisely because of this apocalyptic foresight of disaster, imminent and remote, we feel we have a duty to raise with still greater insistence the eyes and hearts of those in whom there yet remains good will to the one from whom alone comes the salvation of the world, to one whose almighty and merciful hand can alone calm this tempest, to the one whose truth and whose love can enlighten the intellects and inflame the hearts of so great a section of mankind plunged in error, selfishness, strife and struggle, so as to give it a new orientation in the spirit of the kingship of Christ. Christus Vincent. Thank you for your attention. Christus Christus Christus